Welcome everyone to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today we're going to be going up a little bit and a little out west to Mobile, Alabama, where we find the mobile missile Grant Thompson. Grant, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm on I'm online talking to you. Well, how much better could it get? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> you don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, everybody's been going through this race ban where we're not being able to, you know, get out and race vehicles. And, and I know that you and I went out to California getting all kind of geared up for, you know, round one of the junior late model series to go out to be only test a couple of days and then to find out that Saturday we couldn't race, which was a big letdown for me and I'm sure it was for you as well. So. What have you been doing during the shutdown to keep yourself busy? Um, there's not really too much that I've been doing. Basically, just getting caught up on my online school work from, you know, adjusting from the real life school to the online school. And that's been different for uh, not just me, but also for my parents because they've been helping me out with a bunch of stuff. But, um, I mean, not too much. Just doing the same old stuff I've been doing, you know, sim racing, working out. My personal trainer's been coming over almost every day of the week, He's been helping me out. Not, not really too much has changed, just online school and same old, same old stuff every day. Yeah, so what is your opinion of the virtual school side? Do you like it? I mean, it's, I wouldn't say I necessarily like it, but I mean, it's not terrible. I definitely think it's a good way to, you know, keep kids have a really good education during this. I know that some schools, some of my friends, I know they're not having to go through online school because they're probably going to have to do it over the summer. But, um, I mean, it's not terrible. Just It's, it's just been a big adjustment switching from, you know, from the real school to the online school. So, you know, having to take, you know, do Zoom meetings and stuff like that and having to shoot emails to a bunch of my teachers and stuff. So, I mean, it's not too big of an adjustment, but I mean, it's been all right. Yeah. Now, if I'm correct, you're not going to be going back to regular school at all this year, uh, probably later in the fall, but not uh, not back to classes at all as, as you were before the, uh, the virus broke out. Is that correct? Well, we're not supposed to be going back to school for the end of this year, and they've had they've been having to do a bunch of adjustments for like, you know, exams and stuff like that. But um. As of right now, we're not going back to school. This this is, we have two weeks left of school. This will be my uh, first week, and then next week will be my last week of school. So. Oh, so see, your year's almost <laughs> over. That's good. Now we're all about racing. So you also mentioned you've been <laughs> doing a lot of sim racing, and I know that you've been competing in the in the Junior Late Model eSports series, and uh, that's been a learning curve for all of us including us here at Race Face Brand Development as well. So how would you kind of grade yourself so far from where you started to where you currently are right now with your skill set and also your understanding of everything that iRacing has to offer? Well, I've definitely learned a bunch of stuff about from the beginning of the Junior Late Model Esports Series to now because, see, I'm... I wouldn't consider myself an eye racer because I don't, I'm not always eye racing. I'm mostly out in the shop working on my race cars and stuff like that. But, um, I know some of the kids that are in the series play eye racing a bunch. And, you know, before the series started, I did do some eye racing, not probably as much as some of the kids do. But, um, it's still been a big learning curve for me going from playing maybe three days out of the five or seven days in the week from, you know, playing almost every single night trying to test to get better at the racetrack that we're racing at that weekend. But I mean, it's definitely just been a, a real learning curve for not just me, but also, you know, for my dad, he's been trying to figure out, you know, because we haven't always been the fastest on the racetrack in the high racing, but we've been trying to get better at it. And I know that we had to get some help from uh, the racetrack for instructors. So it's definitely been a big learning curve. <laughs> well, I will tell you that the educational process of going through this has been a lot more difficult with the parents than it is your drivers. <laughs> so there was a, right 
there was that learning <laughs> curve and that hump in the road that we didn't expect. But you know what? We've all learned from that and it's been really good. Um, and I think that uh, we all have to realize that virtual racing is something that's going to be a part of our racing careers from this point moving forward. So I really think when you look back at this, you're going to look at it and say, wow, it was a valuable experience. I learned a lot. I'm a lot better than I was when I started. And it's going to make it easier for you to uh, progress forward. It's, yes, it's definitely helped me throughout my career as of right now. You know, from the first race at the Boring to now this weekend at Gateway, I think it's definitely different, you know, adjusting to each track, having to change your line and stuff like that, having to, because, see, the setups that, you know, we've been running, we haven't been able to make adjustments on them, so we've been having to learn, you know, where to enter and where to get off the gas and stuff like that. So it's it's definitely been a big learning curve, but I've, I know for a fact I've definitely learned a lot from it. Yeah, so unfortunately, as I understand it, you're not going to be able to compete in round six because you're going to be at a real racetrack. I think you're at, is it Five Flags this weekend? It's Five Flags Speedway. We're all, um, Thursday, this Thursday night, we're supposed to be uh, testing the Comfort Motorsport Pro Truck. So I'm super excited about that. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to make the round six this weekend. I really wish I was because, I mean, Gateway, it's a really neat track. So... You know, I'm a little disappointed that I'm not going to be able to make it, but I'm also super excited that I'm going to be able to test in a real race car after waiting all this time to finally get back into a race this weekend. So. Now, just remember, there's not a reset button in that truck. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to rub up against somebody or hit the wall or hit the reset button and, and, and act like nothing's <laughs> happened. So just don't forget that. That's right. I won't. All right. So... We talk about the year that Grant Thompson's had. I mean, oh my gosh, I, I'm not sure that I know any other driver that has gone through what you've gone through from going out and attending the junior late model camp, winning the junior late model camp, going out and doing an awesome job in round eight of that championship weekend in a, a junior late model for Nate Clower Motorsports, and then having your own one hour special and then something that's happened here just over the last uh, couple of weeks, um, signing with Augie Grill to be able to race a pro late model with them. What's that like? Well, I mean, I definitely know that Augie Grill is one of the best short track racers in late models to, still to this day. And, you know, to race for him is just unbelievable. I never thought that. I'd be racing for him because, you know, growing up from when I was little from when my dad used to race to now being 14 years old, I've watched all you through whatever he's racing, pro late models, modifies, and super late models. And he's, you know, definitely been a big role model to me. And just to drive for him is absolutely incredible. I mean, it's just an unbelievable opportunity. Well, I think that's really cool. So, Grant, it, let me just ask you a question. How would you rate yourself against other late model racers, pro truck late model racers in the country? How, how would you rate yourself? Well, I mean, we've just been getting started with the late models recently. And so far, I've, I definitely think I've been doing a lot better than I thought I would have. I mean, trucks, I've been running trucks for about, this will be my, I believe, third year running trucks. So... I definitely might think, not trying to brag or anything, but I definitely might think I'm a little bit up there in the trucks. But um, for late models, I mean, I definitely think I'm doing, a, like I said, a lot better job than I think I would be doing with the testing and, you know, coming up later in the season with races at Five Flags and Augie's cars. So, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm terrible, but I wouldn't say I'm up there with Augie and Bubba Pollard and Jeremy Dawson, all those guys. <laughs> well, Grant, I got something to share with you. You know that Speed 51 was doing the top 50 pro, uh, or I shouldn't say pro, but the top 50 draft for late model drivers in the country. Do you know about that? I did not know about that. Well, Grant Thompson, you made the top 50 list. Let's go. That's awesome. I didn't know about that. You made awesome. number 49, but just making that list is amazing. And the good news is, 
You were the youngest driver to make the top 50. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, that's that's crazy. I didn't know about that. Man, that's awesome. Top 50. That's incredible. The top 50 wow, in the country, awesome. man. If you read that list, it's a who's who's list of racers <laughs> in the United States. And for you to be on it, um, again, congratulations. That's exciting. And what another accomplishment. So we talk about all the things that have been going on in your life. This is just another another part of it. That that definitely is. You know, I've I've been trying to get myself in a late model for the past year, year and a half now, and finally getting to get in one and then make the top fifty on that list. That's that's absolutely crazy. I did not know about that. Man. Well, we kind that, of been that, trying to awesome. we've been kind of setting you up for this today. So uh, again, that's <laughs> pretty cool news. I talked to your dad earlier this morning, and he didn't know it either, so he was surprised. So what we do oh, now wow. know is that he can keep a secret, even though it was only for a couple hours. <laughs> Man, that was, that was definitely hard for him. God, that, that's, yeah, that's crazy. I, I didn't think that I'd be in the top 50, maybe, maybe the top 150, but man, I didn't know about that. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think it's going to be like now that you're going to get in and, and are you going to be driving the 112 Pro Late model? I'll be driving the the gold iconic number one twelve for I can drill. That's crazy. <laughs> what what is that? I know you've done a little testing in it. What was the first test like in that car? Well, we went to a uh, Montgomery Speedway, not too far from where I live here in Mobile, and um, I definitely think that we did a really good job. I was very very nervous about driving the car, but I was mainly super excited about it. But, um, you know, the first test session went really well. The first, you know, time I went on the racetrack, I ran about, I'd say, 15 to 20 laps. And the first 10 was just getting the feel for the car and, you know, all the grip on those tires and all the horsepower. I was just like, don't know, but straight away, I was so much G-force. It was crazy. But um, after about 10 laps, I really got the feel for the car. And we started getting after it a little bit more and more every lap, starting to pick up some more speed. And, uh, you know, the first time I hopped in the car, I was just, like I said, super excited, but also really nervous. But um, it was definitely a really good experience. I can't believe that that happened. That, it was like a dream was going on. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that uh, that dream coming out of you for for <laughs> ever since I've known you, actually. So it, it has been a whirlwind. Uh, you're definitely constantly moving up that ladder. That's the... The secret to success in motorsports is that you don't get stagnated there. And like I said, I don't know of any young drivers that are out there that have started up that ladder and has moved as fast as you have and that you're constantly progressing, moving up to the next level, to the next level. You know, I think that uh, 2020 season, once we do get back into full swing, it's going to be a great opportunity for you. Uh, we've got, we're still kind of waiting on the junior late model stuff out in California, you know, we've heard that the track's going to be open back up for some testing and some possible racing, but we still don't have any dates. Are you looking forward to possibly getting back into that again, if we're able to go racing out there? Well, I mean, I think it'd be very cool to get to, you know, get, to go back out to California to race in that Nate Car Motorsport car. And, you know, over the past few weeks, me and my dad have been talking about that, if, if that's going to happen. And like you said, I, I definitely know that we're going to have some practice sessions and they got some phases going on with if they're going to schedule some races later on this year. But, um, you know, if we get to go back out there again, I think it will be, you know, even some more great opportunities to get that faster and faster as we go. But, um, you know, with the pro light model with Augie, I think that's definitely going to be very helpful for me and my career going on, you know, getting to learn how to drive a light model. And, you know, driving the pro light model with Augie is probably going to help me in the deer as well, just getting into two different light models, driving at two different racetracks. It's definitely going to, I think, up my driver skill a little bit more. So I definitely think it's going to help a lot more than it would, you know, decrease anything. So. Well, if we did get to go back out to California, it'd be really cool. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. So a lot of things going on with Grant Thompson. Grant, do you have any of your sponsors that you want to give a shout out here as we wrap up this interview? Well, first things first, I'd like to thank uh, AR Bodies and THC Brakes. I'd like to thank Aussie Girl with 
Dark Motorsports, um, Kerbert Motorsports, Nate Clower Motorsports, and also like to thank my mom and my dad for everything they've done. All right, well, there you heard it. The mobile missile. Again, Grant, congratulations on making the, the draft at Speed One, uh, speed51.com's draft list. Uh, that was a major accomplishment. If you'd like to learn more about Grant Thompson, you can check him out at grantthompsonracing.com. Make sure that you subscribe to his newsletter while you're there. Uh, just go into the fan zone, click on there, or you can go to his Facebook page and subscribe to that newsletter. Matter of fact, Grant, your newsletter went out about 30 minutes before this interview, and I think you might want to check that out. So again, everybody, thanks for being with us. Grant, thank you very much. We'll look forward to getting back with you towards the uh, end of the season and kind of get another update on you and see what other type of exciting things is going on in the life of Grant Thompson. Thank you very much, Ron. All right, everybody, again, thanks for tuning in. If you've missed any of our programs, you can catch up on demand at raceface.tv. Until next time, I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.